the first thing I'm doing when covering this chair, and I'm starting with the front, is to lay the fabric on it to decide where I want the pattern repeats to go. And I've got two of the larger flowers at the top, one in the middle and some lower down on the edges. The buttoning will pull it in, but I think I will still be able to see the these flowers, which are really the main part of the design. Let's just take a look at the, the buttons. These are die cast buttons um that you can buy in the shops i buy these wholesale what i've done is cut myself a template if you buy them in the shops you'll probably find they come with a template make it big enough and you can always trim it down and then you cut your circle of fabric and you cover the buttonhole you're having to kind of hook your thumb into these i don't know if you can see these perhaps you can't the barbs on on here to, to grip the fabric and then put the ends over the top and I've actually I don't know if you can see that one's a bit bashed I had to use a hammer to actually get it in because the fabric is really quite thick so you need enough to hook onto the barbs but not so much that you've got too much bulk in the bottom you need to make absolutely 100% sure that you have got the center of where you want your pattern repeat to be and you the hot the button holes are quite a good guide you can kind of follow them down but absolutely make sure that you've got you've got this central to where you want it because you don't want to have to keep pulling it out and every time you go across make sure the pattern is absolutely central you lift it up a bit and pull or move it about to keep it where you want it and then again, you take your double pointed needle slightly to the left, slightly to the right. But this time, time make sure you've got your little button in the middle. Okay. So my first length of thread is through. I've threaded the button on. And now I'm pushing the eye end of the needle back through the hole and then we just can push 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 pull 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 do our slip knot until you've got that central but before you pull it really really tight you can have a look and make sure that you've got these uh, the folds are going to come where you want them okay because you might need to maneuver them a little bit I need to get the the side ones in first, but just make keep just keep an eye on your pattern that it is really sitting centrally, and then you will find that things will start to fall into place. I've completed the buttoning on the front, and I stitch to the arms, uh, the elbows, on the back, which I will show you in a minute. One thing you need to think of when you're pulling your fabric. You need it firm, you don't want it moving about, especially if it's a chair that's going to be sat on a lot. But at the same time, don't over pull it because if you over pull it, you're going to struggle to make pleats. So I'm just going to show you at the bottom um, if there was another pleat into the center. Okay, so get hold of your fabric and imagine that you've got your pleats coming down here it's really difficult i know to see on this fabric but so i've got a v coming down here and i've got little pleats here and that's going to show me how much i can pull okay so then you've got to work as keep it as tight as you can without pulling out those pleats and you can, you can put a pin in there to hold it, you can move things around and you probably will. Okay, so I've um, line lock stitched from the elbows around here and I've, I've trimmed it. And I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to see if I can uh, use the cut off triangles to make the arms. Because they're so tiny, it would be really good to do that rather than having to cut another great length of fabric. 
I just want to show you how I've prepared the for the to put the arms on. So I've snipped, I've made darts cut down to the line now because we've got a barrier cloth here that was a practice you will know where to come down if not just mark your arm you can put a chalk line or mark it with pins um, so I've gone into the buttonhole that will join the top cover to this to the arm and you should be able to go from this dart so you can just fold under and then you'll be able to pull your front cloth through to the back so here's a quick look at how I've placed the arms, I've tucked the fabric under just because it's easier for you to see before I put the arms on. And I've pinned into the buttonhole here and set the pleats here and folded under so this, uh, the bottom of the top will then fit through nicely. I want to show you now how I've decided to place the pattern for the arms. Now bear in mind these are very tiny arms. If you had uh, bigger arms you would take the pattern over from side to side and you would need to cut a new bit. So because these are so tiny and I can actually have got enough in the cut off uh, to make the arms I've decided just to keep the pattern synchronized. Make absolutely sure you have enough to cover the, the seam of the top and stitch under and that you have enough to go under and stitch at the bottom. Now the arm's in place but we have a bar here and we need to cut the fabric to fit round it. This is where the regulator, the fat needle with the flat top comes in. Push your finger down to feel the bar and push the regulator through the fabric at that point and the hole it makes is the point you cut to. You can see here where I've cut a dart and that will go down to the bar and pull either side of it. The arm is now on, smoothed down and pulled under quite firmly. The top part is now pinned into place. You'll need to put some pleats on the arm but try to keep them as far over as you can you can see here where I've had to remove the seat base and now the arm is finished, I can tack it back into place. The seat top cover will then cover it. So the next thing to do is tack the bottom of the arm down firmly and then add the buttons here where the pins are. I can then pull the front through to the back and go from there and the front are now buttoned together and I pulled it underneath and stitched it. So the last thing we have to do is get the back or the front rather pull it round and fix it stitch it up again on the back. Now this is possibly the trickiest bit because we need pleats here but we also need to be able to snip it to the bars on the back. Remember they had the bar, the upright bars. So we need to be able to cut. So actually this might be a good time to use the front that you took off as a pattern. Um, stretch it all out and then you will see and try, but don't cut back too far. You know, you can take it under, find where your bar is, come back, match it with your pattern so you have an idea because if you cut too far you don't want you know if you come up here and you can see it when you pull back because the seat I'm going to wad it more but it will still be pulled tight so be really careful that you don't cut too much because you're in trouble. Everything's stitched around uh, ready to do the seat you have to be really careful to pull and smooth and trying to keep everything level. You can see here I've put some little pins in the vertical pleats. It's quite tricky when you're pulling through to the back and you're behind the chair to keep everything in place. Uh, and this just helps to keep everything in line. I needed rip string. 
was because the front was worn and there was absolutely nothing covering this hessian. So nothing between the hessian and the top fabric. And the chair was used quite a bit actually for a tiny little nursing chair. And so this had worn through the fabric. So I've got this piece of wadding here. Um, quite a good hefty piece. I just took it from the width because I want to use what's inside it and it can, you can always use it again, you won't go to waste and it comes with a layer of some type of fabric um, so that it doesn't all stick together. So what we do is we just place that over and I want to take it right back to the edge and through and we can come up a little bit at the back, so you could put a bit more at the back. Just have a look and you want it to be fairly level, um, or certainly not going down in the middle, which it won't be on this chair because it is lovely. So I will bring it over and just feather. So Now you can see how much I've taken off, so I've just covered it here and everything's going to keep pulling down more. Um, but so the same all the way around and I've just left a little lip here so that I can tuck it all through and again you can pull off as you need to and, and that helps to tighten everything up against your, your front as well. As I said, if you feel ne it's necessary um, and you can get yourself a piece that fits a sort of circle underneath and you can add a, a layer inside if you think you need to. This is the Linterfelt cotton wadding in place now. It looks quite domed and it's sticking out, but it's obviously going to come down. What I've just done is pull the front of the arm down and nailed it and put the, the, the wadding, the seat wadding back with a little nail. Now let's just a quick talk about nails. These are 10 mil nails and we use them for general upholstery. 13 mil nails uh, we usually use for the uh, webbing and 16 mil nails we would use um, to hold the springs in place when we use the lashing twine. But one thing you should invest in is a, mag is a magnetic hammer. These are really invaluable, you can just, just your nails there. I place the cambric over, make sure you have enough again to get hold and pull. So the first thing I've done is put a temporary tack either side to hold this. Smooth it down, make sure it is firm but you don't want it over tight because if you pull it over tight you end up with every um, tack that you put in with a ridge. Okay. So let me just show you at the front. Okay, so we have one tack on, right, and I'm going to smooth it down from the centre. This is why you need a good bit to hang on to because you want to get your fingers out of the way. Smooth it down. Take your tack and whack it in, and then. Just give it two or three little bashes. You want it to hold, but not to go all the way in. And the reason for that is that you can take it out. <laughs> if it's in the wrong place, you can take it out. And then for the back, remember again, you've got the metal bars we have to get round. So smooth it out, get your fingers down to the, where that bar is, and then you can nip it and pull it back, or you can use your regulator to go down, find the bar, make a hole, and come back. Okay? So you know where you are, and then you can make a bigger hole if you want. You can snip that straight up from the front, just snip up to the hole. And then you do exactly the same the other side pull it all down and tack so you're even. Then after you've got the one tack in place either side, you can start to move out. So I'm gonna tack a couple on this side, that side, front and back and continue around. 
Now also on the top cover, we have a bar where the arm is. So you're going to need to find that bar also. And when you cut it, you have to think about, you know, which way do we cut it? What we need when we cut is to be able to fold bits under to come around because that's got to be really neat down there. So for this bar, we cut uh, diagonally. So again, use your regulator, bring it back up and cut on the diagonal. So then what you can do, you fold over so you're just slightly in from that dot, fold these bits in and wrap them down. And if you need to snip a bit more, then you snip a bit more, but you need to make sure that's gonna come down here and sit really nice and tightly, especially on your top cover. And then you can manipulate it and pull it back here, but that has got to be tight. I just want to show you how I've uh, fixed the side here. So I've pulled around here and cut across a little bit because as I said the back will come down here and hide that bit and I will probably put another t little tack in here to, to hold that firm as well it doesn't matter too much on the lining um, so then you can see as you come round if you're happy with the way it sits uh, I pulled this side back through um, and you can see as we smooth forward how that's going to sit really nicely and smoothly. Now we've come to the leg. Um, you can see it just in here. So what we need to do is cut either side, decide on a part point either side, because what we will do is fold the, this piece over the leg up inside and then we will make pleats to come to the leg. Okay, so I've, I've cut to the legs and make your points, it's a bit difficult with one hand, but slightly lower because we want to be able to pull everything up sort of inside itself so we, we've not got a frayed bit. I've finished placing the calico around the leg. I've left it a little bit high because I want the top cover to come over it. I've taken it out further than I will the top cover and I've nailed quite far back. And if you can see these little pins here, uh, little gimp pins or decorative nails, and they come in different colors. And a tip when you, I, no, don't worry on this, but when you use them on your top cover, put a bit of fabric over the top to hit because the paint will come off them. Okay, the front leg is finished. But we have back legs and we need a slightly different technique for these. So we're going to turn a piece up here and then just pull around the sides. But first of all, we need to um, make some cuts, but we need to go on the diagonal. If we cut this way, I mean, I have plenty for the fold up, but you've got a loose bit of fabric here you've got to do something with. Not too bad here because you're not actually going to see it. But so you mark one point here. And the other point on the other side of the leg, the other corner, going slightly higher, here. And then you cut your diamond. Well, triangle, actually. But if we think of a diamond, then you know um, the points are going to come here. They're not going to go, you're not going to splay out, you're going to come in. Okay. So we tuck up the diamond, tuck up the triangle, yeah. So I'm going to use just a gimp pin and the only reason for that is that it's very neat and it won't add any bulk in the way. I can actually, it's magnetised as well so I, d I didn't really need to do that. And then back, the top cloth hat will come sit under that. And then you can just fold these bits inside. I'll do it neater than that on the top cover. I'd have to pull the pin, pins out and do it again to even this out, but I'm not gonna bother with this. And so you can tuck under and pull it, and then you've got a, a nice, neat 
seam here because when you put your bottom cloth on you will see um, the edge. I've finished tacking around the outside. I've taken some out, evened them up and put them quite close to the edge of the wood because the top cover then I can put the next row of tacks uh, deeper. Having said you staples because it's kind of on the wood, it is. Um, but this wood is incredibly sol solid and doesn't have too many holes in it. So I'm continuing with traditional upholstery, which is to use tacks. This would be a good time to polish your legs before the top cover of the seat goes on. Um, this chair's really well looked after, so there's not much to do here. So I just used this spare piece to decide where I want the pattern on this. And I'm actually going to follow down. So I'm taking the pattern from the back of the seat, matching it to this, and then going down this way. Check, because I've, it's got the three flowers in it, and I, I want to be able to see those. So you can then lay this on your uh, fabric, and you can cut accordingly. And the next thing is to lay the fabric on the chair, get it where you want it, line it up with the front, get everything even, you can use the legs. This is a very symmetrical pattern, so, and I've been trying as I work to get everything matched. So you check your points, check it's symmetrical, check over the legs, there are good points to, to use for the front. Okay, now I want to show you where I've got to with the, the folds on the legs. Do you remember when we took off the top cover, the pleats came down and there were three gimp pins here. Now, I don't like having lots of gimp pins on display. So the first thing you do before you cut, imagine this fabric is just all in one piece hanging down, is find exactly where you want your fabric to sit and the center of your leg. And then you put in a gimp pig, a gimp pin, and that's gonna hold your center. And then you start to work on where your folds will go and how far back you can cut this. So if I bring these forwards, you can see where I've cut the the V, remember the diamond, always remember the diamond. So then when I've got my V, I've cut a little bit off it and I've turned it under and I've pinned it exactly here. Now this bit is a little bit floppy look. So we need to so we need to hold this quite tightly. So I've put another gimp pin here. Work out where your pleat is going to fall so that it hides the gimp pin. So I've got one here and I put another one in here. The chair is now complete apart from the back. So everything is aligned. And I finished the pleats on the leg. And I'm ready now to make some piping and then do the back. You can see here I've put some Dacron or polyester wadding on the back of the chair. I've just loosely tacked it here with, with just ordinary upholstery thread. I'd normally put a skin wadding on, but I don't have any, so I'm using this polyester wadding. You just need to put that on to cover all the lumps and bumps, as we said before. And now you need to put your piping on. Now, in a perfect world, you would just take a pattern from the back, the one that we took off, if you remember. It's all piped very nicely and should be perfect. But actually, when I put it on, it didn't really fit. It sat too far over here. So I made piping, which I will now show you how to make. So you have two choices. One, you stitch the piping to the chair then the back cover. Or two, you try to make a pattern with your back cover from the piping and machine it. I tend to like stitching. It 
perhaps it takes a little bit longer but I feel a little bit more in control of it. Now I've just pinned on roughly the back cover and then if you decide you want to machine it you've got to make sure that you've pulled it really tight um, because you don't want your piping when you put it back on to be here there and everywhere you want it to keep to that pattern if you're going to machine it you need to use a strong thread I always use uh, this commercial thread um, or you can just buy strong strong thread at your haberdashery shop but it needs to be m more substantial than just cotton if you're going to stitch it you'll use the fine colored twine that I showed you before I had the white one that I used and just match the color as best as you can you can pin it this way to the chair inside out and then you can cut yourself an even seam centimeter centimeter and a half enough you know it's all going to be pulled still and then you will have to tack it from inside the piping um, if we do it this way we have to sew it to the chair quite tightly and then you will sew the top cover to the piping if you're going to stitch the piping to the chair and then stitch the top cover you can feel where the piping is and you can just cut around I want to just give you a quick look at the stitching I did sew the piping on by hand so I've sewn from inside the piping to the uh, fabric of the front so I'm doing the same coming along with the back and I think you can see here I'm just using a running stitch to hold that together and that holds very firmly with the back completely stitched first thing we do is the legs remember the diamond so you cut your V and then you turn up so that when you come underneath you can just pull this around and tack it and you have a very nice neat edge and you'll pull it tight so you don't need to put a pin in it and we have a quick look at the bottom it's tacked all round be very, just be careful on the legs, the rest is very easy. Remember on the, the rounded leg that we need to cut some darts. And the reason we do that is to get them to fit around the leg. Tuck it under. And this is one I've finished. And here we have one very sweet little Victorian nursing chair. So all that's left to do now is test the chair and it feels very comfortable. I hope you've enjoyed watching my restoration of this little Victorian button back nursing chair and that it will be useful for you when you try your own project. If you'd like to see more of my reupholstery or soft furnishing videos, subscribe, hit the bell and then they'll flag up when I make a new one. So good luck with your project, enjoy!